ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار I hope you find it in your hearts to forgive me my tardiness long week long night coming from the neighboring state of Georgia Abdullah I pondered over what to speak about today and I do this a lot cuz there's so much to speak on so much to address so many angles we could come from and i'm listening to the news we have this going on that going on and it comes down to a few things it goes down to the basics and from those basics there's something that we learn which is no matter where we are no matter what we're doing whatever your work is no matter where you're traveling no matter what situation a law put you in financial troubles or the opposite of that you're in school you're out of school you're having children alhamdulillah mashallah the one thing that stays constant in this world of change is the fact that no matter where you are it's you in your ibadah it's you in your ibadah it is you in your worship no matter where you go or what you do it is you in your worship if we sit and ponder that if we internalize that we come to find that this world where everything else is going on and things are getting crazy you can control your world you can control your world this concept of community nowadays we see much division we see much division ethnicity background the trade we're not using these things as means as means of uniting but we're using it as as means of dividing what i've learned to say is okay we overlook the ignorance of our brothers and sisters and those from the outside as well but that one thing that can always unite us is our ibadah so worship We have many different groups this group that group what have they I don't care about those a lot doesn't care about those of my say Salem doesn't care about those when it comes down to community the community is only a sum of what 
It's individuals. It's individuals. And at an individual level, if we look at it as it being you in your ibadah, as that thing that keeps the community together or breaks it apart, now we can look at community differently. Where are you with Allah? Where are you with Allah? Right now, just sit and think. Did I offer Salat al-Fajr this morning? Is your ma'arifah? Nah. How, how many lines is, is, is in, the, in, 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 the, in the masjid for Salat al-Fajr? Oh, I'm not close to the masjid. I can't hear the adhan. It's not binding upon me. Uh, brother, if you can do it, do it. Allah bless you with a vehicle. You come. And it may be with those very instances and situations that keep the community from getting closer and going to the next level. So what we find, I've been around a little bit. A few different countries, state cities, many people are more traveled than me. But what I see, what I see, as, and here's the harsh reality. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter what you've been through. It doesn't matter this, your lineage. It doesn't matter how much money you have, where you live, this neighborhood, that neighborhood. You look down on poor people? Okay. You come to the Saf. You come to the masjid. You pray in the line. We'll see whose prayer is brother. The poor guy or the rich guy? That doesn't matter. What matters? Your relationship with Allah. If one of the foremost things to tightening that relationship with Allah, where if that thing is tight, then the community becomes tighter, is your understanding of Tawheed and your implementation of it. Your implementation of Tawheed. What, am I, what, what do I mean by that? Let's stay at a basic level. At a basic level. We translate loosely, Tawheed is what Allah's oneness, Allah's uniqueness. Okay. At a basic level, is everything you're doing with the cognizance of pleasing Allah only? Everything you're saying, is it with the cognizance? The, the wherewithal that I'm trying to please Allah with this statement. If not, we have work to do. From the other foremost things that keep the community tight, the salah. The salah. Tawheed, salah. Bunyal Islami ala khamsin. Ashakti an la ilaha illallah. Muhammad Rasulullah. Wa aqam as salah. Wa aqam as salah. Salah. If you want to go basic, basic, five pillars. We don't need to be studying the furu' and all this other. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, let's come back to the, the, the basics here. Tawheed and Iman, the first pillar. The second pillar, Salah. How is your Salah? How is your Salah? Again, examine yourself. And if you really want to know where you are with Allah, you look at your Salah. As we know, this is the number one thing Allah is going to look at. As we know the hadith goes, if the salah is good, inshallah everything else will be good. If salah is deficient, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. So much emphasis is put on the salah. 
There's even a mentality that you have to have to stay on top of it. And there's a mentality that Allah and His Messenger want you to have through the Salah, by doing these things that I will mention. Just look at the schedule and the availability and the options. Upon us the mercy that Allah gives us many different options of our ibadat. Ways to worship Allah. Many different options. Fasting, I'm not good at that, but praying, I can do that all day. Huh? And dhikr, I can do that all day. Huh? What happened there, huh? You find your strength, your niche, as we know, it's better to be consistent with a few things than all over the place and doing many things, but it's not consistent. Because the, the consistency shows the sincerity. The consistency shows the sincerity. Before you wake up for Salat al Fajr, what do we have available to us? Tahajjud. Tahajjud. As Allah mentions in the hadith, whoever wants something from me, I will give him. Whoever asks for forgiveness in this time, the last third of the night, I will, I will grant it to him. So forth and so on. Huh? Salah. All the way up, if you're praying, all the way up until the Adhan for Salat al-Fajr. In the Adhan for Salat al-Fajr, you find what? as salat khayrun min al Mentality. It's a mentality you gotta have. If you don't have it, you'll get it. Just stay with the action. Never feel defeated. Even if you lack sincerity, you still do the action that is obligatory upon you because perhaps doing the action that is obligatory upon you, you will gain the sincerity through that. But if you are lacking sincerity and then you give up the act as well, there is almost no way you can get the sincerity. So, you have a vehicle, you have a car, you're far away 10, 15 minutes, something like, may Allah reward you for every single second you drive to the masjid. May Allah reward you for every single step you take to the masjid. While you are individually strengthening your relationship with Allah, and those who come out to the masjid for Salat al-Fajr, they know there's no feeling like it. There's no feeling like it. You feel like you've conquered the world. I'm up when literally almost everybody except for the Muslims are asleep. They're done. They're out. They're, hung, they're hungover Friday night. They're hungover. They're drunk. They're high. They're whatever. But Allah gave us tariqah. He gave us a path to avoid these things. In the adhan, salat al khayr min al-nawm. The salah is it's better than your sleep. Which goes to show you what? You use the sleep. You don't bathe in it. You use it for what you need. And after the adhan, we have two specific raka'at. And again, I'm talking about strengthening your relationship with Allah personally. So that through that, you are strengthening the community. Those two raka'at, before Salat al-Fajr. Allah's Messenger mentions that. In these two raka'at, uh, we know the hadith, is better than the entire world and everything in it. So you value all these other things, right? I got work and I'm running late and I'm this and I'm that. We, we, we got our own thing going on, our own world. We don't want that to get messed up. The reality of what the Prophet is saying in this hadith is that no matter what world or what you got going on, these two raka'at is better than all that. No matter what life you think you can have, the life of the man that you envy, 
the life of the man you don't want. All of it in, in, in between, these two raka'at, it's better than all of it. Again, the mentality. You have to be strong. Strong. We know the nature of human beings to be weak. That's why we have the tools that we have. Ask Allah for forgiveness, get right back on it. Right back on it. No time to sit around feel sorry for yourself. You're feeling sorry for yourself at your own, at your own, uh, at your own deficit. Because you're going to be held accountable for you. So if you get up before Salat al-Fajr and you offer some tahajjud, and you call the adhan, and you're listening to the message, and you offer those two rakat before Salat al-Fajr, and then you offer Salat al-Fajr, and then what are you doing after Salat al-Fajr? Suk, tasbih. You're worshiping Allah even more. Dhikr, dhikr, dhikr. All the way until what? 15 minutes. And so after sunrise, then guess what? More salah, more salah, salat al duha Salat al duha Very basic stuff. Basic, basic. We all, most of us should know this. If we don't, alhamdulillah, we need to know it now. If we really want to diagnose any issues with any community, if we want to take our community to the next level, of course it starts with knowledge. You have the ayah, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ اسْتَغْفِرُوا لِي ذَمْ Right? فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Knowledge comes first, absolutely. After that, الْعَمَلُوا بِهِ الْعَمَلُوا بِهِ You have to act upon it. I can almost guarantee we strengthen our salah, we strengthen our individual relationship with Allah, this community, and every other community will be on an entirely different level. Again, I don't care where you're from. It does not matter. Your skin color, I don't care. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to Allah either. This is when we say Allah is looking at the heart. We don't use that as an excuse for irja and say, oh, I believe in Allah's message, I don't have to do anything. Oh, where do you get that from? No, 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 no. Now we say, Allah looks at the heart. Saying, despite your differences, that Allah has given to you that you're not in control of, your hairstyle, this, that, whatever. Your women are better than their women. Whatever. Whatever you want to say. My country is better than yours. At the end of the day, none of that means anything, especially if your salah is weak. And we wonder why we are where we are as communities. And we get away from the basics. We're often salatul duha. Then you have Salatul Dhuhr. Many of us know about the Salatul uh, Rawatib, the Raka'at, the optional Raka'at. Four optional Raka'at before Salatul Dhuhr, then Salatul Dhuhr, and then two optional Raka'at after Salatul Dhuhr. But I'm here to tell you something, if you didn't know, there's even two more Raka'ats you can pray after Salatul Dhuhr. There can be four before and four after Salatul Dhuhr, and what is the reward for that? For the person, as I mentioned in the hadith, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi says, for the person who offers four rakats before Salat al option, then the obligatory Salat al and then four rakats, not two, but four more optional rakats after Salat al And I'm especially speaking to those who have the time. You're retired, you work at night, something, what have you. Allah gives you that opportunity. Take advantage. For the person who prays those, Jahannam is forbidden for this person. Forbidden. 
we have zero excuse. Zero excuse not to quote unquote quote, be in control of our destinies. Do you want Jannah? There it is, right there. Do you want a strong community? There it is, right there. Do you want a vibrant masjid? There it is, right there. It all starts with the salah. Salah, ya akhwan. Salah. Then we're moving on to Salat al Asr. We're going to stay on the Salah, Salat al Asr. Many of us, when we grow up, no matter which madhab you're taught, we believe there's no sunnah, there's, op- there's no option of rakat before Salat al Asr. Incorrect. There's four. You can pray some more. News flash, you can pray some more. You can pray some more. You can strengthen your community even more. You can strengthen your relationship with Allah and His Messenger, with Allah even more. Prophet he said, which could be translated to me. May Allah have mercy upon the one who prays for, meaning optional rak'at before Salat al And what is the main way? The ultimate way that we enter into Jannah. As it was mentioned, even the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he said in the Hadith, even not him is going to make it on his own merit solely. The main way we make it, Allah has to let us in through His Rahmah, through His mercy. Through His mercy. That is where we enter into Jannah. There's two more rak'at after Salat al Asr. Difference of opinion. If you want to offer those after Salat al Asr, believing that uh, hadith is sahih, uh, then tafaddal may Allah reward you. If you want to abstain from those because you don't want to pray during the time where it's uh, haram to pray, so forth and so on, you can abstain those. May Allah reward you both equally. And then we have what? Salat al Maghrib. There's a hadith of Prophet he said there is a prayer, there's a salah between every single adhan and niqam. Meaning there's two, uh, two rakaat you can pray at least between every adhan and niqam. So guess what? Guess what brothers and sisters? We're praying some more. We're praying some more. How bad can a community really get? Let's think about it. How bad can a community really get? If the community is full of people who have gained the shade of Allah or Yom al being as those whose hearts are attached to the masjid, how bad can that community really get? Because if there's nothing but salah going on, I don't see anything but good things happen for that community. You understand? This is the pillar. This is the formula. No need to reinvent the wheel. Get this Imam here, he'll, he'll take our community to uh, heights we've never seen. Get this guy here, we take No, 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 no. The leadership in the community starts individually. Leading yourself. You save yourself and then your family and your people, whoever you're responsible for, from Jahannam, from the fire as well. The leadership in the community starts with each and every one of you. The Imam is the icing on the cake. The, the, these other heads of authority, they're the, you know, just the cream on top of the, whatever you want to call it. And then we have Salat al-Madr, of course, there's two optional raka'at after Salat al Then we have Salat al Aisha. Salat al-Aisha. One of the salawat that is mentioned in the hadith, there's a difference of opinion amongst the scholars of Ahl sunnah 
that if you routinely miss Salatul Isha and Salatul Fajr, or some of the scholars say Salatul Isha or Salatul Fajr, this is a sign of nifaq. This is a sign of hypocrisy. Very, very, very important. Salatul Isha. You're tired. What, is, what time is Salatul Isha? It's after 10 o'clock now. It's after 10. What are you doing after 10 o'clock anyway? So guess what, brothers and sisters? Let's pray some more. Huh? But most distractions are in the summertime. So most distractions in the summertime. The women, they don't wear nothing. They got, the crime increases. This, that, whatever. So a mercy is in the time for the salat being spread out throughout the entire day. So at that same time at night where Isha is right now, where normally throughout the year you will be doing something you shouldn't be doing at this time, you have to now replace it with Salat al-Isha. And oh, by the way, Salat al is about six hours later. There's a mentality, brothers and sisters, we need to have. There's a mentality that Allah is trying to train us and tell us that we should have as Muslims on an individual level and as a community on a grand level. So again, I repeat, it does not matter what the color of your skin is, where you are from, what you do as a trade, how much money you make. What matters is the wajibats that are upon you, the obligations that are upon you. Are you doing those things? I don't care where you're from. I look at you as a Muslim. Are you doing things that a Muslim should be doing or not? So it's a community challenge. Community challenge. I don't know how many lines are here for Salat al-Fajr and Salat al-Isha. And especially for the rest of the summer. These are pretty good length of lines, not too long. I've been in some massages where the lines are way over here to here. Let's try to get at least three lines for Salat al-Fajr and at least four lines for Salat al-Isha every day. No excuse. You see how many people here? How many, what, how many people here? Inshallah, we're going to see when we line up. See, Islam is about, we got to hold each other accountable. Respectful way. Eh? This, this is how we improve. Huh? Let's hold each other. How many people here? I can't even. It's got to be at least uh, 80 people. 90. That's the easy three lines. Come on. Come on. Your heart's got to be here. It's got to be here. If your heart is not here, it's not attached to Allah, it's attached to something else, and that's not worth it. So, may Allah strengthen our communities. May Allah give us sincerity. May Allah strengthen our individual relationships with him. May Allah allow this community and every other Muslim community to decrease in divisiveness and increase in unity upon that which is good. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasna fil akhirati hasna wa kina ibadah min nar. Kim